Over the last few months, I've been wondering if there's a cheap way that I can add some off-grid solar power to my shed to charge all my battery-powered tools, lawnmower, strimmer, and so on, using these battery packs. Now, I could just run an AC mains cable from the Whirly Bloke Labs next door, but where's the fun in that? So after some late night browsing, which is always a dangerous thing to do, I came across this package on Banggood. You get a six kilowatt inverter, a solar charge controller, and a small 18 volt, 18 watt solar panel, all for under a hundred pounds, and that's around $120. And it's designed for camping and traveling, but looked ideal for the power that I need to charge my Ryobi tool batteries. Now I will need a 12 volt battery to store the solar panel charge, but I've already got something suitable lying around. So this looked ideal and at a very good price, but let's see what eventually turned up and if it's any good. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. For less than £100, I wasn't really expecting too much, and after a few weeks, everything arrived. You get this 6 kilowatt modified sine wave DC to AC inverter, which is more than enough power for slow charging a few battery powered tools. Got a couple of screw terminals on this side for your DC input, 12 to 24 volts, and there's a cooling fan. And there's a single AC outlet and a couple of USB A sockets for 5 volt output power to charge your USB devices at anything up to 4.2 amps total. Now I found these multi-region AC outlet connectors are always a little bit flimsy but I'll be using an extension cable on this anyway. And next to the power switch there's some LEDs that show you when it's on and there's a red one that lets you know when there's a fault. And this has got all the usual overload and short circuit protection built in. And this case looks like extruded aluminium, but it's actually plastic, but this is built to a price. You get a battery connector and a car cigarette cable for the input. This 30 amp solar charge controller is available everywhere these days, but it should be up to the job. And if you're wondering, this will only work with lead acid or PB batteries, and it's not suitable for lithium ion phosphate. The solar panel uh, is quite small, not too big. And this is a mono crystalline silicon type. It's 18 volts output from here, 18 watts of power. And the spec says it's around 20% efficient. And I've got this monster 12 volt, 100 amp hour gel lead acid solar battery left over from another project. It's a bit over the top for this, but I had it anyway. Let me get rid of that. Why are these heavy? Whee! Now, all this is built to a price, but I knew that when I ordered it, but is it up to the job? Now I'm going to get these wired up and checked on the bench just to make sure that everything's working and then I'm going to have a think about how to get it installed in the shed so that I can use it. So while I was checking this out on the bench I found a few interesting things. So when you turn this on there's a little LED display which is showing you the input volts and the AC output from this connector on the side here. Now that says it's 11.8 volts. On my variable desktop power supply, it's saying it's exactly 12 volts, and I know that's correct, so it's a little bit out. And the current draw on this in standby is 500 milliamps, whilst there's nothing connected. So that may be a bit of an issue in draining the battery. Now if we plug this in, that is now happily charging my Ryobi batteries and the power supply over here is now showing four and a half amps which is sort of about right because this is a four milliampere hour 
charger, sorry, four amp charger, and there was a sort of residual standby current on here of about half an amp, 500 milliamps. So that's sort of about right, but we need to bear that in mind. I've wired everything up, got it on the bench out here, and as is typical now, the sun's gone behind a great big cloud. But the solar panel is connected into the charge controller and I can see it's connected and it's charging the battery, which is fantastic. And then the output on the load of the charge controller I've got going into the inverter. Now, this is the best way to wire it. Although this is a 30 amp controller, it will only deliver 10 amps. So that's more than enough to charge these Ryobi batteries. Fine, we'll probably need about four amps, four and a half amps. So let's just turn this on, see what happens. Bit of a delay. The inverter's come on. I've got 12.6 volts. This is delivering 230 amps. And I can see that my batteries are charging, which is fantastic. So all I've got to do now is fathom out how I'm going to wire this. Fortunately, we are south facing here. So the sun runs nicely across there. And I think this small solar panel will fit quite nicely on the outside of the cabin. Just need to get all the wiring in and nice and neat. So let's get on with that. <laughs> So I've got everything all wired up and looking neat. We've got the solar panel on the outside, that's south facing, and the sun runs across there. This is going into the charge controller. The output of the charge controller to the battery is connected up here. This is fused with a 10 amp fuse. And then the output, the switched output, is powering the inverter again via a 10 amp fuse. And then I've got an extension cable coming off here, which is connected to, well, that's where I've got my battery charger plugged in and there's a little light down here. So if we turn this on, there's a bit of a delay while everything catches up. There we go, the inverter's come on. The battery charger is charging the batteries and I've even got a little light over here if I need it. Now using the switched load output from the solar charge controller for this application is the correct way to do it. But if you were powering anything more than maybe five, six, seven amps, then that's probably not the way you want to do it. You'd want to power the inverter directly off the battery. In this case, it's fine because I needed about four amps for charging this. And although this is a 30 amp solar charge controller, the switched output will only switch 10 amps. But as I say, this is quite a nice little arrangement and things are going pretty well. And the nice thing is when I turn this off like that, I know everything's powered off, it's nice and safe, and all it's doing is charging the battery. Fantastic. So, has this worked? Well, actually, yes. I've now had this solar powered AC supply in the shed for the last three months and it's been happily charging my lawnmower batteries. Now, this arrangement wouldn't really be suitable for something with higher demands. The 18 watt solar panel is nowhere near powerful enough to keep the solar battery at full charge if it's used 24 seven. But I only need this to charge my lawnmower and that gets used a couple of times a week at most during the summer. So this is perfect and all these parts cost under a hundred pounds. And if you're looking for a semi-permanent installation for off-grid solar power that's used sporadically, this works just fine. 
and I plan to keep it in place to see how it stands up and works out over the winter. Banggood market this as a package for camping or travelling, but if I'm honest, a solar powered portable power station like these is better for those applications. They're at least double the price, but you just have to pick it up and turn it on, and apart from connecting the solar panels, there's no wiring involved. But if you're on a budget and need a semi-permanent install for an off-grid outbuilding, shed, caravan or RV, then it's a pretty good choice. And if you just want to experiment with a solar project, it would be perfect. You could easily upgrade any of the components to give you more power as and when you've got the money. And that's got me thinking about whether I should make the whole of the Whirly Bloke Labs off-grid. There's a fairly big power demand because it's full of computers, aircon, heaters and several media servers that need to be on 24-7. It'd be a bit of a mission, but it's a really interesting idea. I've left some links to the Banggood parts in the description if you're interested and there's a discount code for some additional savings. If you put something together, do let me know how you get on in the comments. Give this a thumbs up if you found this useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.